So some of the things coming up, Monday, May 13th, I'll be in Toronto at a Chiefs of Ontario Housing Committee meeting. We've, you know, we're going to work with uh, other chiefs to try and secure more funding for housing on reserves. Uh, and this is pre uh, followed by an Indigenous Services uh, joint gathering with chiefs, which is being hosted in Toronto on May 14th and 15th. And that's just an opportunity for Indigenous Services in Ontario region to report to us and some of the work that they've been doing. Uh, Constable Teresa Hill will also be receiving a badge. She's a new member of the Six Nations Police. That will be on May 15th. And on May 16th, um, there is going to be a dinner at Social Services. It's put on by Health Services. It's called Know Your Status Campaign. Um, actually, Deb Jonathan at Public Health is involved in it as well. It's going to be a catered dinner. And some of the guest speakers are Dr. Mark Puglia, who's speaking on Hep C. Teddy Surrett speaking on his personal LGTBQ journey as a First Nation person. And Big Joe will be speaking on his own personal recovery journey, journey and providing some musical entertainment. So if you're not uh, doing anything on May 16th, come on out to the social services gym. I will be in Toronto on May 17th to have a meeting with the new CEO of Hydro One. Um, and on May 20th, of course, is Bread and Cheese Day and the election vote. So everybody get out and enjoy your bread and cheese and cast your vote on the new um, on the amendments to the election code. On May 21st, uh, uh, Marie-France Lalonde, who is one of the Ontario MPPs and a former Minister of Community Safety, will be visiting Six Nations. And later that day, I'll be traveling to McMaster University to meet with the President, Patrick Dean, who wants to talk more about uh, establishing a, a, a relationship uh, between McMaster and Six Nations. Uh, on May 23rd, we have another MPP, Karina Gould, who's also going to be visiting Six Nations. And that evening, uh, there is going to be a gala at the Luna Station in Hamilton to celebrate the Mohawk College Partnership. So we'll be attending that as well. Audrey Paulus will be attending uh, AFN Education Transformation Conference next week, so she uh, will be there. And uh, May 21st, 24th, there's supposed to be an announcement about a One Million Trees presentation at Kayanase. So we just need to get more info on that. May 28th and 29th, Councillor Carl Hill and I will be in Tyendinaga for the next Iroquois Caucus meeting. And on the 30th, I've been asked to speak at the uh, Youth Peace Day, which is going to be held at the Paris Fairgrounds. That will be in the morning. And later that evening, is the uh, Hamilton City Hall is going to be celebrating the beginning of Indigenous History Month with a flag-raising ceremony on May 30th at 6 p.m. So if anyone's interested in attending that or in Hamilton, please be there. The uh, release of the uh, final report of the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women Inquiry will be on June 3rd. Some of our families will be attending that, and um, I plan to attend as well with them. And on June 4th, of course, is our Tom Longboat Run, and we'll also be hosting the Board of Governors from the University of Waterloo, who are going to be meeting here at the Gathering Place. I've invited them to have a meeting here so that they can learn more about our community and about our people. And I've also asked Phil Montour to come in and uh, do a presentation on our global solution and our land rights struggle. The All Ontario Chiefs Conference is coming up. It will be in Batchewana, Sault Ste. Marie on June 11, 12 and 13. And on June 12th, there will be the Brantford Area and Sports Hall of Recognition induction ceremony, which Councillor Audrey Paulus Bombery has agreed to attend. Also on June 13th, um, Children's Health Sciences Hospital at McMaster will be unveiling some welcoming signs that they are, have prepared and uh, they're going to be spread throughout the hospital. And on the 13th, there will also be a gala for uh, YMCA after the bell. That's going to be held in Flamborough. And June 14th, I've been asked to come to the NDP convention in Hamilton just to welcome everybody to our traditional territory. And to finish that off, on June 20th to 22nd, Councillor Audrey Paulus Bombly will be in uh, Quebec to attend a 2019 Govern for Impact annual conference related to education. Okay, so just to end off, again, we'll do, again, we've continued to lose people, which is very hard on our community. So condolences to all those who may have lost loved ones in the past weeks. Our uh, thoughts and prayers are always are with you. And uh, as I say, when we lose any community member, it affects all of us. At the same time, we'd like to give congratulations to those who have done uh, something you know, over the past one or have been awarded something. So this year, we've got some pretty high-profile awards that were presented. Amos Key, who was recently appointed as the Vice Provo at Brock University. Con big congrats to you, Amos. And also uh, to Rebecca Jamison and Beverly Jacobs, who both received the Order of Canada. 
Congratulations to them. Great work and both well, all well deserved. Congratulations as well to Kylie Farmer, our former Miss Six Nations. Kylie was in the, the Gathering of Nations in Albuquerque. She was a, a contestant in the Miss Indian World contest. Although she didn't win Miss Indian World, we're so proud of her because she did win Miss Congeniality. So good job to you, Kylie. Uh, also, I have one last message from Sherry Lickers and the staff and children at the Bicentennial Daycare. I'll just read the message that they wanted me to put on the radio. It is with great pleasure and sadness that the staff and families at Bicentennial Daycare have said goodbye to Laurel Flo General, as she has retired from Six Nations Child Care Services on May 3rd. She has been a longtime employee at Six Nations Child Care Services for the past 22 years. Through her years at the daycare, she has touched the lives of many children and their families. Flo's positive vibe brought laughter and fun into any room she taught and also into the lives of everyone she came into contact with. Flo was a dedicated worker who always went that extra mile to assist co-workers, students and parents in any way she could. She did an excellent job of planning events and trips for the children in her care. Flo will be greatly missed by all her co-workers, children and their families and students. Have fun on your next journey. We love you, Flo. 